recalled your school days when there had always been that geek or nerd in the class, dark green glasses was always pitied for their colorless, tasteless life, or so it seemed to the cool. Well, today I'm going to tell you the story of a nerd who used to steal spices from kitchen cupboards to see what happened when they were mixed together. A nerd, when taken to the playground, didn't get over slides the classic way, up the ladder and down the slide, but rather up the slide and down the ladder. Well, this nerd is me. <laughs> Looking back at my life, I had pities, definitely. It is not on my own life, but rather on my generation for having been raised with a misshapen concept of learning and culture. A concept that has taken the form of a boring but inevitable task that has to be achieved in order to pass exams and get a degree. A goal for which they ought to sacrifice fun and leisure, simply represented by a movie, several hours on social networks, or a go on video games. The sort of activities that have nothing in common but color, sound, and motion. It is, without any doubt, more tempting for one's mind and senses than half an hour behind the book, all black and white most of the times. Even away from studying, when it is as simple as asking my adult friends what they think of an opinion article I have come across and found interesting, or even have written myself, I always got the same expression. Oh no, I'm definitely not going to read all this. Yes, it is a fact, and we have to face it. We will never gain one's attention, concentration, and motivation if we demand that they stay away from what they consider their platform to the world, and instead ask them to read dull text. This sorrowful reality has created in me a deep, ever-growing motivation to make a change. And this has been like a lighthouse that my inner eye weirdly but constantly kept pushing me towards. Despite the fact that my ideology has created an enlarging gap between my friends and me. Yet, I never forgot Steve Jobs' famous commencement address at Stanford University in 2005. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. There's a Chinese proverb that says, tell me and I'll forget, show me and I may remember. So the more senses one engages in any mental process, the deeper their understanding to the communicated information is, the longer it would remain in their active memory, and the more efficiently this would find applications later on. This logically leads us to novel teaching methods such as engaging the learner in the teaching-learning process and learning throughout experimentation or trial and error. Hey, I can hear you out there. You were just saying, what's new in your talk? Such approaches are already adopted by a large number of institutions worldwide. Yes, I do agree with you, but let's be sensible and realistic. Can we anticipate providing equal opportunities of hands-on and wet lab, lab experience for students of all levels in this critical point of the history of the region, especially when taking into account the burden, projections, and impact of the crises of war-torn neighboring countries. So to be straightforward, anticipating, anticipating this in the short run is like a homeless shopping for furniture. I have always believed that the field of multimedia has to be solicited. In fact, well-designed multimedia resources can lead to better comprehension than traditional verbal-only messages. Again, what's new in that? There's an endless list of available big production documentaries. Well, 
Let's get back to the Chinese proverb. Tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I may remember. But this is not all it says. It also says, involve me and I'll understand. You will definitely have more to tell about the report you watch on TV than about the same report when you listen to it on the radio while driving your car. But how about being the reporter, being at the center of the event? You will remarkably have way more to tell. Learners who produce their own work as multimedia products can, de can develop a good understanding of how text, pictures, and sound work together to present an idea. This deepens their understanding of the communicated information and exercises their thinking <laughs> skills. For this, I am addressing my message above all to those of us who are lucky to perform all or part of, this, of their studies abroad and had hands-on experience on advanced technology. Unless confidentiality agreements prohibit it, I would like you guys to be the eyes and ears to those who weren't lucky, weren't lucky to be where you are and lay hands and eyes where you have laid yours. My idea does not require advanced or complicated technology. On the contrary, all it takes is taking advantage of the tiny device that is becoming part of our everyday lives. I think you can guess what, what that is by now, our smartphone. Taking photos, videos, and selfies is becoming one of our everyday habits. So why not make it somehow beneficial? If you start recording videos, documenting interesting phenomena we are witnessing, and found interesting, or how advanced technology is being operated, no matter how ordinary this may become to us at some point, and present this as short footages, we would somehow be contributing in bringing infrastructure to institutions that lack it and cannot afford it. We would also be satisfying curiosity of students whose ultimate possible horizon may be the frontiers of their neighborhood. Since the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, I took the first step last summer. As part of my PhD project, I was working on the setup of a new biological test that measures molecule affinities to their target proteins. This type of test guides us as researchers in the search for new drug candidates. That summer, I couldn't take a proper holiday since I was working on a critical point of the test. And to push away the idea that I had to spend long hours in the lab while everyone in the team was enjoying the sun and the beach, I started recording time-lapse videos for the apparatus, or what you might prefer calling the robot, but we scientists like to make things more complicated, so I started recording time-lapse videos for the robot while performing its task. In addition, I took still photos for the different tools and devices and screenshots for the software that operates the robot. <coughs> Our technology experts may be wondering now, you come from a completely different field of study. You would need another life to acquire the necessary skills in the rapidly developing field of multimedia, such as mastering editing software, for example. Well, if I have learned one thing from my life abroad, it is that in professional life, it is less about what we know than about the attitude and openness we bring to a given field, especially in a time where borders between the different fields of study are gradually vanishing where science is becoming more and more interdisciplinary and applied transferable skills are highly encouraged. And there's no one better than Albert Einstein to quote in this context, imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited, imagination encircles the world. And that creativity is intelligence having fun. For me, all it took was to arrange the video clips, photos, and screenshots in order in a simple slideshow with automatic transition mode. Add to this a simple voiceover recording commenting on what's happening to present a short documentary. While this 
has been done for mere amusement and time killing, it helped me gain a deeper and more global understanding of what I was working on. In addition, it may present a teaching aid for teachers in search for some in institutions that lack the infrastructure. It may as well satisfy curiosity of students and give them a new taste for learning. And who knows, maybe inside each one of us lies a documentarian, a scriptwriter, a cameraman, a director, and a producer. Guys, you should never lose faith that you are entitled to have a better future. A future that you and only you would create. You are the scriptwriter of your life, the cameraman, the director, and the producer. And you can be at the heart of every event. And believe me, the moment is coming when we will regain our authenticity and unearth our identity. An identity unlike any other. And let's not forget what Walt Disney said, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. Thank you.